It has been a week now since the ice storm of 98 first hit Maine, and there are still more than 100,000 people who don't have their power back. Crews are out working, but they are not going to be helped by the weather today. At best, the weather will likely slow down their progress. At worst, it could cause more outages. News Center's Kevin Mannix is watching the weather and is here to tell us what's happening. Kevin? Yeah, already the southerly winds have knocked out a bit of power in, uh, or it's knocked down some power lines in uh, Cumberland and uh, Falmouth. And uh, also uh, some additional uh, power has gone out in the greater Portland area. Uh, out around Deering, so these strong southerly winds causing problems, and they're not the strongest winds of the day. That's going to be coming behind a cold front, which right now, as we look at the radar, is converging moisture over New England, and uh, it's mostly snow in the mountains and hills. In the interior, we're getting mixtures of snow, sleet, freezing rain. It is rain along the coast. One good thing about the strong southerly winds, it brought in some pretty mild temperatures uh, very quickly overnight, first thing this morning. But I do expect late this afternoon, this evening, rain will go back to snow, and there may be a few slick spots even along the coast as we get bursts of uh, snow showers and squalls just along and behind the cold front. For the interior, snow, sleet, freezing rain will be changing to all snow, and it will be slick. And it looks like uh, some freezing rain now in Arista County, but it looks like mainly a snow event there with two to six inches. The other part of this story, the gusty northwest winds. Again, they could uh, do some additional damage to ice-laden and weakened trees and power lines. And it's going to usher in some bitter cold Arctic air for later tonight and tomorrow and wind chills. That's something we haven't talked about. That's also, Rob, going to be a factor when we get into tonight and tomorrow. It also makes it colder in the house and could freeze pipes faster. So we're going to be addressing all those issues. I'll be with Jim a little bit later on and back with you in a few minutes. All right, we'll see you then, Kevin. <laughs> Restoring power to more than half the people in Maine is a staggeringly expensive job, and it looks as though ratepayers are going to pick up the tab. Central Maine Power and Bangor Hydro are estimating the storm will cost them about $25 million. That covers everything from overtime to snapped lines. As private companies, the utilities don't qualify for federal aid. As a result, they will likely pass along to ratepayers the expenses they're running up. The outlook is more encouraging for state and local governments that have also spent a lot of money since the storm hit. Vice President Al Gore is coming to Maine on Thursday to inspect the storm damage firsthand. He is scheduled to fly into Brunswick Naval Air Station and then travel to Augusta and Lewiston. Now, before he arrives, President Clinton is expected to declare much of Maine a disaster area, which would make the state eligible for federal disaster money. The money would go only to state and local governments. The governor estimates the storm has cost those local governments and state government $6.2 million. That estimate does not cover damage to private homes and private businesses. Uh, officials with CMP say more than 44,000 customers have had their power restored in the last 24 hours. As of this morning, 124,000 CMP customers were still without electricity. Now here's a list of the hardest hit service areas. In Alfred, 8,900 customers still without power. In Augusta, 26,000. In Bridgeton, 22,000. In Brunswick, 7,300. In Dover Foxcroft, 1,000. In Farmington, 4,500 people still without power. In Lewiston, 23,225. In Portland, 6,200. In Rockland and Belfast, 11,000. In Skowhegan, 2,100. And in the Waterville area, 11,750. And here are the latest outages for Bangor Hydro. The Bangor division, including Costigan, Greenfield, Bradley, Holden, Orrington, Hamden, Newburgh, Dixmont, Ornville, Bradford, Charleston, East Corinth, Exeter, Garland, Kanduskeg, and Alton. Northern division, Lincoln, Lee, Burlington, and Bowerbank, Ellsworth Division, Hancock, Sullivan, Eastbrook, Blue Hill, North Ellsworth, Otis, Mariahville, Waltham, and Amherst. Now, the ice storm isn't the only storm brewing in Maine. Bangor Hydro is accusing the, is accusing the owners of a wood-fired plant in Jonesboro of trying to profit from the outages. News Center's Donna Gormley joins us now by phone. Donna, that plant was supposed to help restore power to thousands of folks in Washington County. What happened? Rob, we did a flyover in Jonesboro yesterday. You could actually see smoke coming from Index Plant. It was all fired up and ready to power up the Sunrise County, but that didn't happen. Bangor Hydro says Index tried to gouge them. 
folks at Bangor Hydro say they had a rate agreement with INDEC to provide emergency power after eight miles of downed power lines blacked out much of Washington County. But yesterday, Bangor Hydro pulled the plug on the backup power. The reason? The Hydro says INDEC upped the rate. Now, Rob, I spoke with officials at INDEC who paint a much different picture. They say Bangor Hydro ordered their plant to shut down last month, costing them a lot of money. INDEC says to get emergency power to folks in Washington County in the last couple of days, it had to pay to hire workers and restart the plant. Rob Bangor Hydro has now hooked up a spare transformer and diesel generators. Folks there tell me that people down in Washington County should start getting power back sometime today. Losing electricity can make you feel isolated enough, but on top of that, thousands of people in Maine have also lost their phone service. Bell Atlantic says right now about 6,800 customers can't make or receive calls. Most of the trouble is in the Augusta, Waterville, and Farmington areas. If you lost your phone service and can get to another phone, here's a toll-free number you can call to report the problem. Again, it's a toll-free number, 207-555-1611. Usually toll-free numbers begin with 800 or 888, but Bell Atlantic assures us there is no charge for a call to this number. Again, 207-555-1611. The number of customers in New Hampshire who still don't have their power back is down to about 10,000. The discouraging news is the freezing rain or snow today may cause more outages. In many places, the situation is rather delicate since the repairs that have been made are temporary and may not withstand bad weather. To the north in Canada, the effects of the ice storm are still being felt from Ontario across to New Brunswick. About 200 soldiers moved into the St. John, New Brunswick area today to help clear debris from the storm. There are still about 1,000 people along the Bay of Fundy who don't have power. In Montreal, things are slowly, ever so slowly, returning to normal. That city was slammed by the storm. Some small businesses have started to reopen in downtown Montreal. More than a half million households in the province of Quebec, though, don't have power yet. Some won't get it back for another week. Now, several television stations in Maine are working together on a telethon that will raise money for the American Red Cross. The Red Cross has run up bills of about $300,000 in the last week setting up shelters and offering other services. All the stations in Portland are going to be working together on a telethon that will air tonight at 7 o'clock. You'll see it right here on this station. Those of you watching in eastern and northern Maine will see another telethon. It's being spearheaded by WLBZ2. That telethon also airing at 7 o'clock tonight. Both telethons raising money for the American Red Cross. There are obviously a lot of people who are still struggling through this storm. The place to turn if you need assistance is the official statewide information clearinghouse, our Neighbors Helping Neighbors program. Jim Crocker is there with the latest. Jim? Well, that's right, Rob. Except no imitations. This is the place to call 1-800-464-1213 or 828-6666. Our operators have been busy since 8 o'clock this morning. There will, be, there will be someone answering the phones right up until midnight. So if you uh, are in need of something, have a question about something, or if you want to volunteer your services somewhere or have some wood you'd like to get to somebody who needs it, give our folks a call, 800-464-1213-828-6666. And I had a call from a, an old friend, Harry Skye, a retired rabbi in Portland, who said that a lot of people uh, didn't get hit very hard by this uh, uh, ice storm. And so you should count your blessings and when the telethon comes on tonight, make a call and make a donation because it could always be a lot worse than it is. Rob? Okay, thanks very much, Jim. At Telethon again at 7 o'clock tonight, our Neighbors Helping Neighbors program available all through the day. The number is again, if you're interested, in Portland, 828-6666. Anywhere else in the state of Maine, a toll-free call, 1-800-746-3651. Well, the weather is the big question mark for the next 24 hours or so. Kevin Mannix is going to be along with the full forecast when we come back. As we said at the top of the newscast, we have gotten reports of some new outages that occurred just this morning. Falmouth, Cumberland, and in the North Deering neighborhood in Portland. This is the result of the... Strong winds, stronger winds, they're not terribly strong, but they are picking up and they are they're going to be a problem. The, right, they're picking up out of the south, Rob, ahead of the front, and they're more prominent on the coast, so I think that's why 
those areas you mentioned are having a problem. And again, I, this is going to continue to be a problem, and it will become one for the interior as the winds pick up there behind the front, and that's going to be moving through this afternoon and this evening. So that's one problem. Uh, one that isn't a problem right now, temperatures. They're doing pretty well. We're seeing uh, even a moderation across the interior, not enough to melt a lot of ice, not enough to get it over from uh, to rain. Uh, we're getting sleet freezing rain at uh, Freiburg and Skowhegan and uh, freeze, uh, sleet, or, sleet or freezing rain at Sebec Lake. Uh, still snow at Fort Kent and Bethel, and we're seeing a wind shift to the northwest of Montpelier. That's why I put it on there in a temperature uh, that dropped two degrees this hour. And here's your mile there here, which has been coming in all morning on that south and southwesterly wind. So we're raining in places like Sanford, Lewiston, Augusta, Bangor, Rockland, Bar Harbor, all in the upper 30s, 41 at Portland. Look at Mont uh, Portsmouth, 43 degrees. But note, Laconia is still at 28. There's still some pockets of cold air uh, in the interior valleys, so there will be some sleet freezing rain issues there which will go back to snow as the cold air comes in aloft and then eventually at the surface after the front goes by late this afternoon and this evening we'll see uh, an abrupt shift in the winds to the northwest and then we'll start having some problems. Up to 27 at Holt and 21 at Caribou, they were zero this morning so that southerly flow is a real influence. 34 at St. John, 36 Bar Harbor, 38 Brunswick, 45 Boston. Enjoy this brief warm-up because it's going to change rapidly this evening. Here's your precipitation now converging across the area. We talked about the type, but this band right here, this is the one that will come through this afternoon and give us our heaviest precipitation, and it will start going back to snow from a state snow on the mountains and portions of Aroostook, and then start changing over to snow reaching the coast by evening. There could be some minor accumulations even to the shore with some of these stronger squalls. The point walking, driving, be careful this afternoon and this evening for this and also keep looking up because weakened trees and poles and, and iced interior sections, still there's still a lot of ice around, uh, we could have some renewed problems with that. There are your forecast highs which obviously have been exceeded along uh, some southern and coastal areas but uh, they will change rapidly tonight. Let's look at the marine forecast. Uh, gale warnings are up, south-southwest winds 20 to 30 and gusty, seas 3 to 6 feet Visibility 1 to 3 miles. There's your wind shift and your increasing winds tonight with seas 4 to 8 feet, moderate freezing spray, 25 to 35 knots and gusty. Why? Frigid Arctic air is going to be sweeping in behind this front. Here's your convergence of moisture moving through New England today. At least it's moving rapidly. At least we did get some warmth in here finally. And then uh, your Arctic high pressure system will drift east and the Arctic air will pour in tonight and tomorrow on northwest winds. We'll have wind chills. We haven't had that. We're going to have some of the coldest temperatures since the first of the year, and it's going to hang around for a couple of days. We'll watch this energy ride through the south and try and move up the eastern seaboard end of the week. It could be a storm Friday, maybe not. We're just going to have to wait and see. Want to concentrate on the cold air. Again, it's going to modify a little bit. We're just really going to see kind of a glancing blow of the real major heart of the Arctic air that we've been talking about with temperatures 20 to 30 below. I mean, these are current readings right now, 17 below, 22 below. We won't quite see it that cold, but that said, it is still going to be turning very cold tonight. It'll be very windy. Wind chills will be an issue. We'll get into more of this when we talk with Jim. Uh, some of the wind could do some drying, but uh, there may be some refreezing of some surfaces. And then we're into the bitter cold air Wednesday and Thursday. All the winds diminish late tomorrow, but that means very cold lows, minus 10 to plus 10 for uh, Wednesday night, Thursday morning. So, uh, you know, we've been lucky, but uh, our, our luck's kind of running out. Yeah, winter's coming back. Yeah. All right, thank you, Kevin. Up next on Storm Center, we'll take a look at some of the other news that's going on today. Saddam Hussein is putting his... This is a joke, right? Think about it, Jen. The circus is perfect for our situation. Joining a traveling circus? We need a place where we can blend in, a place no one will question our identities. We can travel undetected. We can even earn a little extra money at the same time while we keep Abby safe. And at the same time, we'll keep working with Laura on tracking down Peter. Mommy, can we call Grandma again? Well, not yet, sweetie. 